So what are we all doing here anyway? Splitting logs for Sister Larson. The young women said they'd bring the food. Are you sure the eldest Cohen wouldn't prefer to take care of a service project? Yeah, right. They'd break every bone in their body. Brother Gunner thought this would be a great chance to have some fun together. Let's see who can split the most logs before dinner. That's exactly what I was thinking. And the person with the most logs gets another brownie. Yeah, we'll even throw in an extra scoop of ice cream. Okay, Robbie. You and me. I'll take you on any day. Better you than Joseph Smith. He cut and split a tree that was 40 feet tall and 5 feet thick all by himself. It took three men to do the same. He did more than that. He cleaned up after himself and he always sharpened his axe. I wouldn't give Sean a sharp axe. He might hurt himself. Hey! Like Joseph Smith, a lot of the youth in our ward love sports. The prophet Joseph Smith was six feet tall, about 180 pounds, and developed his physical strength working on the American frontier. The prophet played baseball, like I do. In sports we say, it's not enough to be good at a sport, you have to be a good sport too. Joseph's physical activities gave him the strength to overcome many trials and obstacles, but never stood in the way of his spiritual development. In life, we have to plan everything out so we don't spend so much time on sports that we miss out on the spiritual things. Sometimes decisions are really tough, but we just gotta remember that if we're good at something like sports, it's because Heavenly Father has blessed us to be. Hey Billy, why aren't you hanging out with Robbie anymore? He ditched me on Friday night to hang with a basketball team. What's the deal? You guys are pretty good friends. I bet when something goes wrong, you're the first person he turns to. Well, maybe I don't want to be his friend anymore. Oh, we heard the coolest story about this in seminary. William Phelps and Joseph Smith were best of friends. But then he turned away from the church and told lies that sent Joseph to Liberty Jail. Joseph said, had it been an enemy, we would have borne it. Years later, William was really sorry for what he had done. He wrote a letter to Joseph and pleaded for forgiveness. Joseph felt William's sincerity and welcomed him back with open arms. Joseph wrote, for friends at first, our friends again at last. Well, when you put it that way, I guess I could give Robbie another chance. Hey, PJ, wait up. I'm going to seminary, too. Oh, hey, Andrew. Hey, have you taken Brother Nelson's challenge yet? No, I haven't. I'm just not sure. Do you really believe Heavenly Father answers our prayers? Sure. Don't you remember any of the stories he shared with us? Like the one about Colesville? No, I wasn't paying attention. Well, Joseph Hiram and the Whitmers have to go to Colesville to organize a church there. But it's a dangerous journey because there's a mob on the lookout for them. They even offered a reward to anybody who knew where Joseph was. So before they left, Joseph prayed that Heavenly Father would blind the eyes of their enemies, which he did literally when they passed the mob on the road and the mob didn't recognize any of Joseph or his company. Wow, that's pretty cool. But do you really believe Heavenly Father answers your prayers? Sure, I think that's one of the most important things we learned from the Colesville story is that Heavenly Father answers us in specific ways, so we should ask for specific things. Hey, we gotta get to class. Yeah. The Prophet Joseph Smith endured many heartbreaking trials over the course of his life. Trials that would bring the greatest despair and defeat to even the bravest of souls. But undaunted, still he trusted in his Heavenly Father's care. One dictionary defines the word undaunted as being courageously resolute, especially in the face of danger or difficulty, not discouraged. When Joseph was a child, he got typhoid fever, which caused an infection to travel into his leg, leaving him in the most excruciating pain for nine weeks. Surgeons decided to amputate it, but Joseph refused, demanding instead that they only cut away the infected parts of the bone. 
This was done without anesthetic, but undaunted, still he trusted. While living on the Johnson farm, a mob of over 50 people dragged Joseph from his bed by his hair. They carried him out into the fields, where they undressed him, beat him, tried to pour acid down his throat, and then put tar and feathers all over his body and face. One of his sick children caught a chill that night and died a few days later. But undaunted, still he trusted. The prophet was endlessly criticized both in the public press and in private circles, being called such things as a deceiver, a fanatic, an egotist, and a fool. He was kidnapped, imprisoned, starved, tormented, and had his property destroyed. But undaunted, still he trusted. The prophet and some loyal brethren spent over four months in Liberty Jail under false charges. It was a foul place of hewn oak and rock, constructed somewhat like a large box. Their food was poisoned, and on one occasion this caused Joseph to vomit so violently that he dislocated his jaw, which he replaced himself. But undaunted still he trusted. In a letter written to the saints from Liberty Jail, Joseph said, God hath made broad our shoulders for the burden. We glory in our tribulation, because we know God is with us, that he is our friend, and that he will save our souls. On the road to Carthage jail, Joseph exclaimed, I'm going like the lamb to the slaughter. I shall die innocent, and it shall be said of me, he was murdered in cold blood. But undaunted, still he trusted. One eyewitness said it was here that the prophet spoke his last words, saying, God's will be done. But undaunted, still he trusted. This man, this husband, father, and son, this prophet, seer, and revelator of the Most High God, suffered more for his work than any other man of his time, and has done more, save Jesus only, for the salvation of men in this world. He lived great and died great in the eyes of God and his people, sealing his mission and his works with his own blood. Undaunted, still he trusted. As he walked the path of his life down a road that took him to Carthage jail and a martyrdom he knew was coming, undaunted, still he trusted. There comes a time in every life when troubles will be brought. It will do no good to feel such strife, but miss the lesson taught at daylight set and break of dawn. Kneel to pay my toll, for still the battle rages on for my immortal soul. For he was still yet in his youth, went to a grove to pray. A humble prayer he sought the truth And yet brought forth that day The restoring of God's church What greater gift than this Before him many pains and hurts The end for him and his Legacy on earth, 
went to one in heaven, leaving behind a mortal hearth, receiving rest is given. So as I sit here by myself, I cannot fight alone, for I am chosen of the Lord, and God recalls His own. still yet in his youth went to a grove to pray a humble prayer he sought the truth and yet brought for that day the restoring of God's church a greater gift than this but for him many pains and hurts the end for him and his for although I was troubled on every side yet not distressed Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Undaunted, but still I trusted. <laughs>